painting custom keepers you have asked about. And apparently, I'm Yoda today. So several people have asked about uh, painting their custom keepers with acrylic paints. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. There is nothing special you have to do. Um, it, you just basically paint on it like you would paper. It's going to act a little different because this is plastic. But um, I do understand your need to see because we're visual. We have to see, not just hear about it. So we will do that. They paint beautifully with acrylic paint. The only thing you have to remember is don't goop it on there too thick because it's plastic. You put it on there thick, it's just going to peel right off. <laughs> now these thin ones, I've not had any problem with them peeling. I mean, I've tried to scratch the paint off and it just does not happen. So, you know, I think as long as you keep it thin, you're good. Okay, <laughs> so I've done uh, several of these. And I like to do the little stripey things because some of the vinyl already has this sort of strided texture to it. And it just feels natural just to kind of just keep it stripey, <laughs> I guess. But you don't have to. You can keep it any way you want. What you're going to need is a vinyl custom keeper notebook cover thing, which you can find in my Etsy shop. I'm going to mention all kinds of stuff during this, and I will put all the links down in the video description so that um, you can find them easily. And I've got, a, I've got several here that ended up just kind of plain and boring, so I don't want to sell these. Your custom keeper comes like this. It comes with instructions on how to string it in case you want to pull your strings out, and that's why they're not tied because you can pull them out and makes it easier to decorate. And your elastics are white so that you can color them if you want. You can paint them. I did that on this. I just diluted some brown acrylic paint and ran it through and then it gave me a nice brown elastic. And I did that with all of them. So you can color or paint your elastics, but to work on it, you just want to pull them out. Set them aside so they're out of the way. To begin painting your custom keeper, you will need some paint and a brush. I know, it's complicated. Really, that's all you need. Um, I'm going to use one of these brushes, which these will be back in my Etsy shop uh, eventually. Um, I have more ordered. They come from China. So it takes them like a month to get here, but they're worth the wait because, you know, they're just great little um, stipple brushes, stencil brushes, and just messy paint brushes. So I'll have some more of those. You don't have to use that. You can use your fingers. You can use whatever brush you have. And I am using today acrylic paints from DecoArt. And I have several of the DecoArt Media Fluid Acrylics. And I have some DecoArt Americana Craft Acrylic Paint. I have a few of the uh, Americana Multi-Surface Neon Paints. Because I sometimes just like a little unexpected of neon and some deco art traditions artist acrylic paints so use what you got this is what i got this is what i'm using I just totally blocked my source of light which is my window it's beautiful out today okay um you don't have to do anything special like i said you just start painting and paint with the colors that you like. These are not planned. I pulled out the ones that I liked, and so those are the ones I'm going to use. This is Aqua Sky Americana paint, and I think I'm just going to do this. Now, this is PVC vinyl. It is a plastic it's going to act like plastic because it is 
plastic. This paint does not soak in, it sits completely on top. So you have to keep that in mind. That means it's gonna dry slow. You can help it along with your heat gun, but um, it will eventually dry, but it's gonna take its sweet time. And sometimes you might notice these will have a little, a little bit of hair <laughs> on, the, on the edge. <laughs> yeah, that usually means that when I cut them, my blade needed to be changed and I was too lazy to do that. You can just trim that off because each one of these are cut by hand, 90% of the time by hand, individually, one at a time, measured and cut. Yeah, it's a pain, but um, we just don't have the cutting tools that we need, so we're using what we got. These are what we got. Okay, I am wiping this off over here. I've got a little thing of water. I don't even need to dump my brush completely in it. Just dampen it and do this and most of the paint comes off, the loose paint anyway. Then I can go on to the next color, which will be, I don't know, how about, uh, I like this one. This is the Fluid Acrylic Naphthol Red Light. Let's pretend I'm saying these names right, because I got no clue. I would imagine at some point I'm going to put some kind of cheesy background music in here because otherwise this is going to get really boring. Um, what next? Well, I'm just kind of feeling this uh, Indian yellow. I don't worry too much about creating mud. That doesn't mean that I don't create mud. Oh, I most certainly do. I just keep going and paint over it. <laughs> and eventually it just works itself out. <laughs> you just put enough stuff on top of it, you completely hide that mud. I think now I'm going to use this Quinacridone Magenta. I need this cobalt turquoise hue. That is looking really pretty. It just looks kind of like a big bruise. That's what I like. <laughs> I really love the colors of a good painful bruise. You know, the purple, and the blue, and the green, and the yellow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I want to say a word about using your heat gun on this stuff. This holds heat like you would not believe. Please be very careful when using your heat gun. Because uh, it's going to heat up like crazy, and then it's going to stay hot. For a while. Let's just go phthalo blue. Just a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's what it needed. I've got enough red on there that it's going to get purple in spots. I think it needs some, uh, one of the neons. Maybe this green. And I'm going to put this on kind of like this. Then just kind of blend it out a little bit. Do you see how on some of these it's sort of lifted the color underneath? That's just part and parcel for working on a plastic. And if that bothers you, just go back in with something else and hide it. Normally it doesn't bother me. I'm gonna set this aside to 
dry. And while it is doing that, where's my elastics? I'll color my elastics. Some of this leftover paint. So that was easy enough, right? Let's clean some of this up and we'll do one more. This is just a little rubbing alcohol that's been diluted with a little water. I don't know, maybe half and half. And a piece of scrap paper to use as a cleanup sheet. got the pretty bruise. <laughs> okay, let's do one more. We'll do a big one this time. I lay out my vinyls in such a way that I can get the most journal covers off of each one. So Sometimes some of them end up really plain and ugly and that's why sometimes some of them have just like a weird nose or an ear on them Which are my personal favorites but um, Yeah, I have to do that to get the most out of each billboard Hopefully someday I'll be able to cut on purpose, you know to get like a particular image on there But I can't do that right now because it would produce too much waste so that is a um, gives me a good opportunity for painting and decorating on these plain ones. Okay. Now, if you're wanting to paint a cover and the one that you got has some kind of really dark background or it's got letters or a pattern on it and you're worried about that interfering with your painting, then yes, you can gesso over these. Just like with everything else, thin and even, and it will work just fine. some reason yellow just a little yellow seems to make everything better I don't know why I don't know what it is and I found that the shade of yellow really doesn't matter it can be a bright lemon yellow it can be a 
rich, uh, like a yellow ochre. And sometimes it just helps everything to make sense. Okay, I think these are looking great. And after you get all done and you step back and look at them, then you can kind of, I kind of finger paint in a little bit here and there. And just colors that I want to add or want to see more of. So this one just didn't have any kind of red in it. Okay, well now it kind of looks like a crime scene. <laughs> but... And this is naphthol red light, and there's nothing light about this, but that's okay. Just add a little bit of this red, and then I'm feeling like, okay, another good neutral blender color in addition to yellow is this neon orange. I don't know why, but it just, for some reason, it seems to pull things together too. And I use a lot of it. I was using a whole bunch of it. I was doing some painted papers yesterday. And this just, see, it just kind of makes, it pulls things together and makes them make more sense in my mind. Now I like it. And usually my fronts and backs are totally different. You know, just kind of depends on, uh, even though I use the same paints, I use different amounts and in different places. Neon pink, because see there's already kind of some pink going on here. So, let's just use a little more. Now I'm going to show you how to string your notebook covers, restring them rather. Um, they come pre-strung, but like I said, you can pull the strings out. Your covers are completely reversible, so you know you can just pull the strings out and reverse them if you want, if you're not even going to decorate your cover. These are just very versatile. So. Let me show you how to restring. It comes with instructions, but sometimes it's easier to see it in person. And y'all, I have to give a shout out and a huge thanks to, I think her name is Jennifer over at Chic Sparrow. She makes the gorgeous leather uh, traveler's notebook covers. And if it wasn't for her, I would have no clue how this whole construction thing <laughs> even worked. I learned everything from her. She just puts it out there on her YouTube channel. She gives it away freely and because of that next time I'm in the market for a leather traveler's notebook cover, guess who I'm buying it from? No one but Chic Sparrow. Um, she has just been a huge help. She, I mean she'll just walk you through the whole how to do this process um, step by step. I lost my Oh, there it is. Okay. Now, here's what I do. I decide which which one I want to be the front. And for this, actually, I, I think I want this to be the front. I really like this blob of coral right here. I want it just like this. So that means this is the inside. I use a little piece of craft wire, just a thin um, craft wire, nothing special, just a little scrap of it, and I kind of use that to thread this. You can use a floss threader, well for part of it you can, but I just find this wire is cheaper and easier, and <laughs> you know, it works. So you can take the wire, do your, um, put it, pull it through your center loop like this, and then just use the wire kind of as your needle to thread the elastic through. You can do it without the wire, but it's it's kind of tricky because the elastic is like just the exact same size as the hole. So um, that little wire just makes it easier. So there's my center one. And to do the binding string, I just take my wire 
and put it um, around kind of toward the end of the elastic just like that and then I sew and pretend this is my needle. I'm going to go down through the center hole pull it through and leave a tail that goes just past the center knot. Then, doesn't matter which direction you go, left or right, but you just move over and come up through one of the other holes. Don't lose your tail. So, we're like that, yeah. This probably would have been better to do with white elastic so you could see, but I'm committed now. I've already started. Now you just go straight down to the corresponding hole on the opposite end. This one is on my left, so I'll go down here to my left hole, go down through. Just like that. Then I'm going to scooch over to the center. There's no skipping holes or anything like that. It's just, you know, up, down, scooch over one. Then I'm going to come back up. Now I came up through the center hole down here, so I'm going to go down through the center hole up here. It already has a piece of elastic coming out of it. That's okay. Just move that over to the side and go back down through that center hole. This is where the wire really helps a lot because getting the, the two elastics in one hole can be tricky. So now we're like this. Then move over one to the right hand hole, pull it through, and then go down to the corresponding right hand hole at the other end, pull it through, and then you need to come up through the middle again. like that. And these don't need to be pulled tight, especially as you start to fill them. They're just going to kind of tighten themselves up. So I always string mine pretty loose. So I swear sometimes figuring out which one to pull takes an engineering degree, but Eventually, I get it. There we go. Now, get them, I just get them about the same tension and I leave them kind of loose. And then you tie this off in a square knot. Okay, you start the knot just like you do any other knot, right? Just like that. Now, to do a square knot, let me zoom in. Okay, you'll see here that this piece of elastic is kind of over and this piece of elastic is under. And to do the square knot, you just want to make sure that you keep the over over and the under under. Don't do this because you're bringing your under over. That would be wrong. That would be a not square knot. You want to keep your over over. <laughs> It just sounds stupider the more I say it, but I hope you get what I mean. This is the over piece of elastic, so you want it to go over the under. <laughs> and then back there, and it'll look like that. And that's your square knot. And I didn't tie it tight enough, and that's okay. I'll loosen it. And then pull it tighter. Just like that. So there we have it. Now we're strung four strings. If you've got too much excess leftover elastic, I do put a little bit of extra so that um, it's easier to hold on to. 
what you can do is snip that off shorter like so and then when you snip it you want to take a lighter and just heat the ends just a little bit so that they won't come unraveled because this is the elastic is rubber in the middle and then it's got like a fabric polyester stuff on the outside and it will unravel so you just heat it just like that don't set them on fire just kind of barely heat it just to keep it from unraveling that's all you need to do and then your custom keeper is ready to fill so that's it that is all there is to painting your custom keeper without any prep work if you do gesso it's a little bit easier you don't get the lifting like you get with um, when you're just painting straight on the plastic the lifting's not nearly as bad because you've prepped your surface I just don't I don't ever bother you know it's not a big deal to me it just adds more interest so that is it I still have the two sizes available they're in the shop ready to go um, yes I do have more sizes coming right now I'm working on inserts y'all asked for pocket inserts you shall have pocket inserts <laughs> but they're kind of a beast so it's taking some time but I get in there okay <laughs> So I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. And oh, for goodness sakes, when you paint yours or decorate them or fill them up in any way, please let me know. I want to see a picture. You can post them in my Facebook group. You can post them on my Facebook page. You can email them to me. You know, whatever is easiest for you. Because I just get super excited when I see how everyone's using them and decorating them. Okay, so that is all I have for you today. The end.